Joining me now, Chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, General Mark Milley. Sir, thank you for being on the program, taking the time today. I, I want to know whether you think this was an easy or a tough decision for the acting Navy Secretary, and why? Well, Harris, uh, thanks for the opportunity. I'm over here at uh, FEMA doing some interagency coordination, but specific to the uh, Teddy Roosevelt and the relief of the ship's captain, uh, Secretary Modley, uh, clearly these are difficult decisions. None of them are ever easy. And it's his estimation, he lost trust and confidence in the ship's captain. Uh, so he, uh, Secretary Modley is the responsible and accountable official uh, to the American people. Uh, and he uh, had uh, reason to believe that, uh, that, the, uh, that the captain operated outside the chain of command, and he relieved him. Is that the type of decision that you would make? Well, I'm not in the position right now with there's an ongoing investigation. I don't have all the facts, but I trust Secretary Modley and his judgment, and I'm going to support him, obviously, because mm -hmm. he is the responsible and accountable official to the American people. And the uh, ship's captain and, and Secretary Modley explained it. Uh, he thought he operated with poor judgment in a time of crisis, and he operated outside the chain of command. So he relieved him, and we're going to move on and make sure that the sailors of that ship are taken care of and that the readiness of the ship is uh, back up to speed. And we're going to continue to focus on responding to the needs of the American people for COVID-19. And uh, I should mention that the acting secretary of the Navy was on with me yesterday, and he said that they had already some things in motion because it takes a lot, more than just 24 hours after a letter would drop, to move 3,000 people. Real quickly, just to hit this one more time, and then I want to move on. You mentioned FEMA, and I know you have those hospital ships. The, uh, our... our Correspondent Jen Griffin, through a source, has learned that the DOD and White House officials, some of them, had warned against doing this, making this kind of quick decision about Captain Crozier. Just a quick thought about that. I'm not aware of uh, any White House or DOD officials who warned against making quick decisions. Uh, that may be. I don't know. Um, I do know that the Secretary of the Navy uh, is responsible to the American people for the good order and discipline of the Navy. Uh, and when he loses trust and confidence in a ship's captain, then that's it. It's target down, and we're moving on to the next, uh, the next task. Uh, when at any time a Secretary of the Navy, Secretary of Defense, President of the United States, or a superior commissioned officer loses trust and confidence in a subordinate, then the subordinate goes. All right. I see the jackets of FEMA standing behind you, and you mentioned where you are. Uh, tell me about the comfort, the hospital ships, the comfort and the mercy. Um, comfort, obviously, here on the East Coast, the mercy on, on in Los Angeles, what they're doing. Well, right now, as you know, uh, both the comfort and mercy were deployed uh, at the end of uh, last month uh, with the mercy going to Los Angeles, comfort going to New York City. Uh, they went up there. They've arrived. They're fully operational. Uh, they've got some small amount of patients right now. Uh, the intent originally was for them to take the overflow of trauma patients uh, out of the local hospitals so that the local hospitals could focus on the COVID patients. Uh, we're reassessing that now, mm -hmm. and the Secretary of Defense is making a risk assessment to determine uh, whether or not we should take on all the COVID patients uh, to relieve some of the local hospitals. But right now, both hospital ships are there, 1,000 beds each, as you well know, uh, multiple capabilities on mm -hmm. those ships. In addition to the hospital ships, we've got four uh, field hospitals deployed in New York City, uh, Seattle, uh, down in, uh, down in uh, Dallas and New Orleans as well. Uh, we've got uh, other capabilities. Uh, the Navy's got uh, two EMFs, Expeditionary Medical Facilities. We stood up 15 additional field hospitals out of the Army last night. Uh, we've got about 450 doctors and well over 1,000 uh, nurses committed nationwide wow. out of the U.S. military in support of various civilian communities. We're providing supplies. We've, got, we've already provided 5 million masks. We've got 5 million more masks uh, in route. We've uh, set aside 2,000 ventilators. We've got 18 or 19,000 National Guardsmen contributing to the fight. And we're going to continue to pile on until uh, we have expended all our resources to protect the American people. All right. uh, so the U.S. military is here, and, and we are here to help. And we are grateful as a nation. Uh, a couple of things. And I'm sure you're well aware of the fact that there's been some criticism uh, after learning that the Pentagon had so many masks but didn't know where to send it. So first, I'm curious to send them, rather. I'm curious to know, as you tick down all of those things that you're bringing to the table, how you know where the need is coming and, and how do you quell that criticism, that headwind of stuff sitting? Where do we send it? Sure. Yeah, well, they, I mean, the way the system works is the need is first identified at the local community, municipality, or the state level. Uh, they bring it into the federal level through FEMA. Initially, it was HHS, and then that shifted over to FEMA. 
So FEMA is the focal point. Mm -hmm. In fact, where I'm at right now is the command post for FEMA. And it's the focal point for all local requests and demands and requirements. They come in here, and then those requests are determined which governmental agency can best satisfy the need. In many cases, it's Department of Defense, so they send the request over to the Department of Defense. We look through the inventory, and we deploy the assets uh, that, that, that are necessary to help out. Uh, so that's how the requests work. In addition to that, there's an informal method where our given mayor or governor might talk to the Secretary of Defense or myself or, or perhaps someone in the White House, and mm -hmm. we'll get that uh, through an informal methodology. <clears throat> but the formal requests come through FEMA over to the Department of Defense and down into the, uh, down into right. the community. That, that seems, General, that seems to be a, a streamline that you guys have, have answered back with, because as you mentioned, it didn't always work that way. Just real quickly, some criticism here on, on the East Coast, because a lot of the patients now that are presenting at hospitals, and I know you say you can skip that now and go straight to the ships, they have COVID-19. I mean, we saw our largest number of deaths in New York yesterday. How well equipped are these hospital ships and these field hospitals to handle when a COVID-19, maybe asymptomatic, maybe somebody who didn't know as sick as they were till they got to the ship? How are you guys ready for that? Well, these are hospital ships, and they, there's full-fledged doctors and nurses on them. Uh, now, the 1,000-bed hospital ship Comfort, for example, about four or 500 of those beds are actually litters that are stacked on top of each other. So those are really holding facilities. Mm -hmm. So you got about 500 or so med surge type, and you've got 11 uh, ICU beds and so on, and, you, and you've got 40 or 50 that can go into isolation. Can you uh, handle COVID-19 and it's contagious? Absolutely. I, I, I think that our medical facilities, both on the ships and the MTFs that are at the different forts and camps, and the field hospitals, for example, that's getting set up in Javits Center, uh, they can and mm -hmm. will, if required, handle the COVID-19 patients for sure. A pleasure and an honor to have the Joint Chiefs of Staff Chairman on Outnumbered Overtime today. Sir, thank you very much. Thanks, Harris. Appreciate the opportunity.